Hello, in this set of tutorials, we're going to be learning about Grasshopper user objects. And I would like to start with a short introduction of a parametric diagram in case you're not familiar with it. So basically, Grasshopper consists of two types of user objects. And these are parameters that store the data and the components that perform actions on that data. And the data is being transferred from the inputs, like the parameters, uh, through wires into components. So in, in the most basic sense, parameters provide, like they, they store their containers of data and components produce. So they are doing something with that data and they produce an output. So the flow of the diagram is always from left to right. There can be some ex exceptions to the flow of data within Grasshopper. So imagine we have certain iterative processes where, where our output from the first from the first iteration becomes an updated input for the second set of iterations. And then the second output becomes an updated input for the third set of iterations, and so on and so forth. So in this case, we wouldn't have just a um, program flow from left to right. It would be more of a circular logic. Uh, however, we are not going to be discussing it in this series, since it's a bit more advanced. Let's begin with grasshopper parameter objects. You can find them in the components palettes under parameters, under params. And there are a few subsets. Geometry, primitive, input, and utilities. Let's start with the geometry tab and let's grab, drag, and drop a few uh, objects onto the canvas. Let's grab a point container, curve, uh, we can also grab rep container, geometry in general, and uh, let's take surface and meshes. So usually these type of uh, objects have one singular input and output, and their role is to contain, to store certain data, certain information. So there's, they perform as a containers. They can reference data from Rhino. We're going to be discussing it in a future series. They can also inherit it from Grasshopper and pass over to other definition or to continuous parts of the definition. By default, when you just click, drag and drop them, you can see that they are orange with an orange bubble. And it says that there is a warning that it failed to collect that. That means that they are empty. So let's go to another type of parameters. So these were geometry, the primitive ones. The primitive ones, um, so now I'm actually seeing all of them, but the primitive ones uh, could be more from, let's say, mathematical. So you can have integer, certain number, or a boolean. You can have text, color. Let's just drag it just to exemplify. Uh, this is maybe a bit more for advanced users. This is something to do with the object ID. So it doesn't consider the geometry type. It's just about the object ID, so uniqueness. We can inspect domain or data path or even a file path. So let's say referencing referencing a certain uh, file, data file from your computer. So now let's talk about input parameters over here. Under the params, input. So input parameters are different a bit different from the parameter objects 
under subsets geometry and primitive and that they are dynamic interface objects that allow you to interact with your definition with your input data so let's start with the most important and widely used input parameter it's number slider and let's take the panel maybe even more widely used input parameter to read it and as you can see number slider has a numerical value that it contains within itself and it doesn't have an input so the numerical value is defined within it if we double click on the, the uh, now the, the name says it's panel because it's connected with a panel output we can here change the name of it we can change the grip style maybe not so necessary we can define what sort of numbers we want to use so floating points or integer numbers even or odd so let's select integer numbers and then we have to define numeric domain so let's say double click on it and type minus 10 and then select green icon and then you can also just drag with your mouse to define the, the value and then we have a range and then we can click OK. You can also access number sliders um, options or settings by right clicking on the object as with most of the components within Grasshopper. You right click on, him, on it and you can define slider type and so on. Also, number slider has a possibility to be animated which maybe we'll talk within a different tutorial for, for that purpose alone but if you're curious you can try to figure it out it's it's quite simple so another input parameter i want to show you is multidimensional slider or md slider again let's use, use the panel to read what's inside so here you can see that it's a sort of parameters or coordinates so this could represent the point within certain domain so here our domain is one by one and the output is the coordinate both md slider and the number slider doesn't have input they don't have input we also have a boolean toggle so true or false if you double click on it and if we grab a parameter object boolean one you can see that it's no longer orange so it has a appropriate data in itself and it's true or false if i double click on it on the toggle it changes the value Under the input, we also have color swatch, click and drag. If we double click, we can change the color that we want to output. And again, let's select the color parameter. And if we can connect, it's now no longer orange. It has an appropriate data type flowing. Let's connect. And here we have a sort of a code, RGB code for the find color we also have this weird one control knob it's similar to number slider i'm not going to go in detail about this one it outputs a numerical value so an another one let's talk about this one it's a graph mapper and graph mapper as you notice so this is the first one well except for the panel uh, and input parameters that have both the input and output possibilities so let's grab let's first right click on it and set the graph type that we want to use let's say bezier so this graph mapper it interacts with data as actually all of the input parameters they interact with data 
um, and they but they do not necessarily need that data to be referenced from somewhere they contain it within themselves but graph mapper so it has now the graph the, the sort of function by which we modify our data and that's output then you, as you can see here it says that no data was collected that means that this one needs some sort of input let's go ahead and connect it with a number so control knob and as you can see we sort of modify we apply function to our input so if you imagine here we provide x value and here we calculate our function value so the last one that i'm going to show you so let's go to input parameters here and then select this this cartoon eyes which says read file so this input para input parameter also has an input possibility and output and let's select this one the file path it's right here let's connect them and then here right click on this the file path and i'm going to select select one select new file location or select it well it's currently it doesn't matter since it's empty so i would just choose uh, select new file location and i will select this one coordinates and say save okay yes i grab the panel and now i can read read what's inside that file and i said read per line so if we go again to select new file location now i'm just going to open this one to show you that there was just a notepad with the coordinates that has been a reference to grasshopper okay so there are some exceptions as i said here so sometimes you might be able to use the input parameters with some sort of referenced data but most of the time it's doing something with that data rather than just containing it so more of a manipulation similar description goes to params utilities subset most of these components are used for manipulating data analyzing it and controlling your definitions we will discuss these components later on. Let's talk about just a couple of them here, starting with the plugin Bifocals. You would not have Bifocals as a default, so you would need to download and install it. But it allows you to see both the icon and the label of your components. The next object I want to show you here is DataDAM. And what it does, let's connect it with graph mapper output. So what it does, it just stops or allows the data to flow. So if I change the input or modify data over here, I need to set it um, to transfer the information through the wire. So I need to click it to reactivate the transfer. It doesn't do it automatically. So just again, without the dam, it updates automatically. And with the dam, it updates when I, when I allow it to be updated. So this is it uh, in this tutorial for Grasshopper parameter objects. We're going to continue looking through these palettes over and over again in future tutorials. I will see you then.